Hello and welcome to my live broadcasting. Nice to have you with us. God bless everyone. I hope everyone is doing okay. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Give me a one in the live chat, please. Hello, hello. Hi all. Guys, I really missed you. Uh, I had to take a break. Uh, a small break for a week. A week off. Because I was really uh, getting disgusted <laughs> from uh, the Islamic teaching. Uh, okay, thank you for the ones, guys. Thank you that for confirming that my sound is great. Yeah, so I had to take a week off because I really felt disgusted. Uh, I have this issue sometimes after a long uh, of time of exposing uh, Islam and teaching about the false prophet of Islam. So, so, so now and then I have to take a break. <laughs> so nice to see you again guys thank you for joining in thank you for joining the live chat today we wanted to talk about the false prophet of Islam why because Muhammad was really telling a lot of jokes 1400 years ago right 1400 years ago in a desert called Mecca, Muhammad created Islam together with his wife Khadija, his first wife, and Waraq ibn Nufil, the cousin of his first wife Khadija. And back then, you know, people had nothing to do but a hot desert, maybe a couple of camels and a lot of poetry. And whatever Muhammad was telling his followers, they actually accepted it to be a true story. But we know that Muhammad is nothing but a joker. So on today's live broadcasting, we will have the opportunity to have a nice teaching together. We will put Muhammad to the test. See if this self-proclaimed prophet is a joker or not. And last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guest in the live chat about Islam or the mentioned topic of today. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer the questions as far as I can. Muslims can also call me live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Maybe the admin can give my Skype ID in the text. So please call me, only the Muslims, please call me if you have any questions or you want to debate me. Call me after I'm done teaching. Don't call me while I'm teaching, okay? And like I said, in the end, we will do a nice Q&A session. So please, if you have any questions, keep them. Uh, try to be relaxed till we finished and then uh, you can ask me questions so if I, if you ask questions during this teaching, uh, there's a big chance that I will miss your question. Before we start, I like to pray with you guys. I like to pray with you. So please pray with me in the name of Jesus Christ so we can be guided through today's teaching. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Lord. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, the devil is scheming, and I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you. Lord, thank you for your grace, and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, we are saved. Please, Lord, please guide us so we can also forgive others who curse us or maybe want to try to persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son. Glory to his name, Jesus Christ. Lord, please give me strength when I'm weak and in need of your comfort. Please give me the courage and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deceptions. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord, give us a measure of your strength 
so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception and doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, guys, who just joined in, welcome and God bless. Let us start today's teaching. And like we said, today we are going to put Muhammad to the test and see if he is a joker, a fake prophet who was telling jokes 1400 years ago in that desert called Mecca. Right? Let us start today's teaching. If we go to the Quran, guys, to chapter Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, we can read the following. Before I go start to read, I have a question to the people in the, in the chat. Can you tell me why this chapter is called Al-Baqarah? Can you tell me, is there someone in the text, in the chat, can you tell me why this chapter is called Al-Baqarah? Please help me to help you. Anyone? Anyone has a nice idea? Yeah, the cow. Why is it called the cow? Yeah, the cow surah, chapter 2. Why is it called Al-Baqarah? I know it means a cow, I know. But why? Why, why is it called the cow? Peter the Wall, you are very close, but why? Yeah. You won the lottery, Peter the Wall. You're correct. If you read this ayah, guys, let us read. And recall when Moses said to his people, Indeed, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. They said, Do you take us in a ridicule? So are you, are you trying to tell us jokes? <laughs> he said, I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. Now, if we go to the tafsir, guys, we will come to a very shocking discovery. And I think many Muslims, and I think actually the majority of Muslims have no clue why this chapter is called Al-Baqarah. Here is why. If we go to the tafsir, the commentary on the Quran by Al-Tabari, Al -Tabari, we can understand that a guy was killed, I kid you not, a guy was killed, and to understand who the killer of this guy was, they slaughtered a cow, they slaughtered a cow, and they started to hit the cow, sorry, hit the, the dead man with a part of the cow, a tail of a cow or a bone or whatever, so that the dead guy will be revived will be resurrected to point out his murderer. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Muslim, do you really believe it in this? Do you really believe that the people sacrificed a cow and they took part of the cow, let's say a leg or the tail of the cow, cut off the tail of the cow or cut off the leg of the cow, starting beating the poor dead man with it to make him alive again, so he can point fingers at his killer? Really? Muslims, really? Do you believe in this? I mean, uh, you know, guys, from now on, uh, you know, God forbid, but if, if you know someone that you love dearly, you can take part of a cow, slaughter a cow, take part of the cow, go hammer down the dead guy with it, so he can become alive again. The miracle of the Quran. This is the miracle of the Quran. Muslims love to say the Quran is a miracle. Right? Really, Muslims? Really? Beating a dead guy with part of a cow so that he can be revived, he can be resurrected and point fingers at his killer. True story, guys. I'm convinced. I mean, I'm convinced. Who wants to say the Shahada right now? Thank you for your donation, Sean. Thank you very much. God bless you. You're amazing, my friend. Thank you. Uh, so, anyone who wants to say the Shahada and become a Muslim after this 
discovery. Oh man. Anyone, any Muslim who will say this is Daif? I challenge any Muslim to say this is Daif. Is this Daif ayah? Is this a Daif ayah, guys? Unfortunately, guys, uh, I actually love to go to Al Tabari, uh, his commentary of the Quran, but uh, the guy who uh, started to translate, as you see, this translation in English of uh, the tafsir of by Al Tabari died before finishing the, his translation. So we only have chapter one and two in English. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the translation for Al-Tabari his commentary on the Quran is not finished so you, we have only chapter 1 and 2 so at least I could find this tafsir by Al-Tabari and we know Al-Tabari guys is one of the old school daddies of Islam right he's a very respected scholar so any Muslim will say this is life Daif Quran Tafsir? Anyone? Any Muslim? Be my guest. I challenge you to say Al Tabari is Daif or his Tafsir is Daif. Yeah, Renfa, maybe you can uh, send uh, my Patreon account, uh, the link to my Patreon account. It's actually patreon.com slash Rob Christian. If you want to put it in a text, thank you for, uh, to the people who want to donate and Love to support our work. God bless you. God bless your families. Please, if you uh, don't have uh, the power or you can't donate, please, guys, don't donate. But if you if you like to donate, we appreciate it. God bless you. So, any Muslim still convinced this is from God? Beating a dead guy with part of a cow to make him alive again so he can point fingers at his, at his killer. Any Abdul? I think we are out of Abduls. I'm trying to look at the text. We have only three cute who is a troll, nothing but a troll. I think it's uh, Faz the Kid. Faz the Kid, is it you? Three cute. You believe in this? Guys, just a second, okay? Give me, give me just a second. I have to check something out. Be, uh, be right back, okay? Just one second. Okay, thank you for waiting, guys. I had to check something out. So, any Muslim? Faris, Faris, if you have the knowledge and the courage, please call me. Call me after this teaching, okay? So we can have a nice discussion together. Let's see if you uh, will say this is a daif, daif, daif. Tafsir. If you go to the hadith, guys, Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih, 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 with a little bit echo, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. It says the following Once Allah's Messenger stood amongst the people, glorified and praised Allah as He deserved, and mentioned the Dajjal, saying, I warn you against him, I eat the Dajjal, and there was no prophet but warned his nation against him. The Dajjal? Really? Wait a second. Muslims. When we ask them who is the Dajjal, they say it's the Antichrist. Last time I checked, let's say uh, in the time of Moses, in the time of Moses, did Christ, did Jesus Christ appear to Moses? Did the people know that God in the time of Moses came into the flesh? So here we have a nice historical contradiction. So I don't want to go too much into that topic, but you know, he Muhammad is lying. And there was no but warned his nation against him. So this is a nothing but a lie. No doubt, Noah warned his nation against him. Against the Antichrist? <laughs> what a liar this prophet is. 
She is nothing but a troll, trolling his followers who have no clue about Jesus Christ, who have no clue, the early Muslims who have no clue who Jesus was, when he lived, where he lived, and what time he lived. So he, Muhammad, is lying about history. But I tell you about him something of which no prophet should told his nation before me. You should know that he is one-eyed and Allah is not one-eyed. The Muslims, according to your prophet, according to your prophet here, Allah and the Antichrist look the same. But the only difference is that the Dajjal has only one eye, but Allah has more than one eye. So your Allah, Muslims, looks exactly like the Dajjal. Do you believe the nonsense here of Muhammad? Not, was, not is he only lying about Jesus Christ, about the real Christ, but he is also telling you that the Dajjal looks exactly like Allah. Exactly like Allah. Just the Dajjal has only one eye and Allah is, has more than one eye. Really, Muslims? <clears throat> if you go to another hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 7408, the Prophet said, Allah did not send any prophet but that he warned his nation of the one-eyed liar, the Antichrist, the Dajjal. He is one-eyed while your Lord is not one-eyed. The word kafir, unbeliever, is written between his two eyes. So here Muhammad added, on top of that, one more thing. The word kafir will be on the forehead, basically, of the Dajjal, the Antichrist. So here again, Allah is comparing the Dajjal with, sorry, Muhammad is comparing the Dajjal with Allah. Again, from a different hadith. But here he's uh, adding on top of it, the word kafir on his forehead. Muslims, really? So Allah looks exactly like the Dajjal, a Dajjal, but the only difference is the Dajjal is one-eyed, he has the word kafir on his forehead, and Allah has not the word kafir on, on his forehead, and he has more than one eye. So that's the only difference between Allah and the Dajjal, Muslim. What about all the other hadith guys? Guys, do you remember the hadith where Allah will appear in a shape? He's a shapeshifter. Remember the hadith? Where Allah will appear and the Muslims will say, we seek refuge from you. So the Muslims will think that Allah is actually Satan, right? But he will uncover his shin, right? And he, he will come in a different shape, shape shift. We know Satan is a shapeshifter. So he will shape shift. And then the Muslims will say, hey, this, this is Allah. Right? And they love to say Allah does not enter his creation. Right, Muslims. I mean, if he does not enter his creation, how do Muslims can see Allah if he does not enter his creation? You see, Muhammad was nothing but a joker. He was nothing but a contradictory prophet, fake prophet. I mean, can you be a prophet and contradict yourself and make fun of your own teaching? Not a mercy. Any Muslims who, who have the courage and the knowledge to refute me, please call me today. I love you to call me today so we can have a nice discussion about today's topic. Here Muhammad is telling more jokes. This is from Sunnah Nabi Majah, hadith number 3781, Great Hassan. So don't say it's ta'if hadith, ta'if, ta'if. No, this is Hassan, Hassan, Hassan. The Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man. What? The Quran will come like a pale man? I mean, why, why is he pale? Why is he not dark? Why is he not yellow? And how is the Quran? How is the Quran? How is it possible that the Quran will take a shape and start to appear like a pale man. And why do Muslims have a problem with Christianity, with the Christian teaching that Jesus, as the eternal word of God, 
coming into the flesh, but they don't have a problem with the eternal Quran, the uncorrupted eternal Quran, uncreated Quran, who will appear like a pale man, like a complete man, pale man. Muslims, you want to have a cake and eat it too? Huh? Muslims, think man. According to your prophet, the Quran will take a shape, physical shape, and it will be like a pale man. So why do you have a problem when we say Jesus is the eternal word of God in the flesh? Huh? Double standards again? Or was Muhammad again telling jokes? Any Muslim who believes that his Quran will take a shape like a pale man? And why is he white? Why not dark? I mean, uh, are you telling me in secret, are you telling me Muslims that Muhammad was nothing but a racist? Was Muhammad a racist? I mean, why doesn't he look like a Chinese? Yellow, a little bit, you know, Chinese. Sorry, guys. I'm not trying to be a racist or something. But, you know, Chinese people have a more yellow-like skin, right? White people. Why, always, why, 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 is, why is Islam always about white people? Huh? Why, what's, what's the thing with Muhammad? His armpits are white. His... Face is white. He doesn't like black dogs and whatnot. What's the thing with white? I mean, can we just make the, a conclusion that Muhammad was nothing but a racist? He didn't really like any color but white. Right? So, Muslims, either you're going to leave Islam today or accept the fact that your prophet was nothing but a hypocrite. Telling jokes. He was nothing but a joker. And the proof is in front of you. If we go to a different hadith, guys. This is Sahih Muslim. Look what it's saying. I heard the Messenger of Allah saying. Read the Quran, for it will come as an intercessor for its reciters on the day of resurrection. So, as you see from a different hadith. The Quran will take a shape and it will intercede for the Muslims who read the Quran. So the Quran will basically carry the prayers. Remember guys, this reminds me of Allat Al-Uzza Wal Manat, the three daughters of Allah. So we don't only have the three daughters of Allah who will carry you know, when Muhammad bowed down, remember the satanic versus incident? The very famous satanic versus incident of Muhammad when he went to the pagans and he prostrated, he bowed down to the three bird idols, the three daughters of Allah, Allah al-Uzza wal Mahat. هذه القرانيق العلا إن شفاعتهن لترتجى These are the mighty cranes, the bird idols. The three daughters of Allah, their intercession is hopeful. So these bird idols, guys, Allah al Uzza wal Manad, they used to carry the prayers of the pagan Quraysh of Mecca. Pay attention, guys. They used to carry those prayers all the way to the pagan moon idol, Allah, who already existed before Islam. So we would hear the prayers of the pagan. Meccans. So here, Muhammad is nothing, telling nothing new basically. Here he's saying, the Quran will intercede. Right? He changed his mind from the three bird idols. And the Quran will take a pale shape as a man, like a pale man. And he will intercede. Some sort other sources say that the Quran will have like something like a wing. It, 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 will, it will fly the, the prayers all the way to Allah. It, it, he will be the intercessor for the Muslims. He will intercede. Well, they can deny this hadith. This is a Sahih Muslim. If you call yourself a Sunni Muslim, you cannot deny this. This is Sahih Muslim. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Authentic hadith, no doubt about it. Right? Any Muslim? So, as you see, guys, Muhammad loved to change his mind every second, contradicting himself, changing his mind, and then start 
changing his teaching, right? Every time he went to a group of people, he liked to reconcile with them. When, but when he understood they were rejecting him, they were rejecting him after they found out he's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. And we know there are, were many fake prophets in the time of Muhammad. You remember Musaylam al kaddab That's what Muslims call him. He was also a prophet like Muhammad. Musaylama, who was killed by, if I'm not mistaken, Khalid ibn Walid. Khalid ibn Walid, right? The general of Abu Bakr, right? They called him Musaylam al kaddab He was also a prophet. And there were many prophets like Muhammad, fake prophets in the Arabic peninsula. Who love to call themselves prophets. Self-proclaimed prophets like Muhammad. So Muhammad was not, not the only prophet of his time in basically nowadays Saudi Arabia. Right? Yeah, three Abduls who gave us dislike. I hope these three Abduls will call me after my today's teaching. If you have the courage and the knowledge, please call me. Yeah, if there's a Ustaz from Indonesia who's hiding in the live chat, Please call me after I'm done teaching so we can have a nice respectful discussion, okay? Hold your horses, call me after I'm done. If you go to, to the Quran, guys, you go to the Quran, back to the Quran, chapter 55, Surah Ar Rahman, ayah 56, we can read the following. I looked up two translations for this ayah read with me guys there are maidens this is talking about the huris remember the huris the virgins that muslims will get from allah if they go to the islamic brothel called jannah right the islamic brothel prostitution paradise of muslims called jannah so there are maidens restraining their glances whom neither humankind or mankind nor the jinn, right, nor the jinn, Satan and his followers basically, the jinn, have deflowered before them. So according to this ayah, guys, Allah is describing what's inside the vagina, kid you not, yathmithuhunna, Right? That's the Arabic word. It's describing the hymen, the untouched hymen of these virgins, these creatures who are big breasted creatures. He's just talking about what's inside the female vagina, the hymen. That's what the word means. But you know, Muslims love to sugarcoat. When they translate the Quran. And Sahih and the National is the most disgusting translation for the Quran, which is a translation by three women. You know what Muhammad used to say about women, right? So, why do Muslims use the most used translation, which is Sahih and the National, that is created by three women? That amazes me. But anyway, you know, Muslims, they are nothing but hypocrites, munafiqun, reading the translation of three women who were called by Muhammad, women called by Muhammad half-brained. So why are you reading the translation of three women? And not only that, they are in America, those women who translated the Quran. Anyway, look what it says. In them are women limiting their glances, untouched before them by men or jinni. Untouched. But the word is even in Arabic, mowers. It's talking about the hymen, which is inside the female part. Disgusting, right? Allah needs to mention, or in this case, we know it's Muhammad. He needs to mention the beautiful thing inside the... <coughs> yeah, you know? Is this a prophet of God? Muslims, is this a prophet of God that needs to talk about what's inside? The female part, that it's untouched, not deflowered by any man or any jinn. Really, Muslims? Sorry, guys, 
you know, I really feel uh, disgusted and I don't want to be disrespectful to the ladies that we have in our uh, live chat who are watching. I mean, this is not my, this is not my eye. This is the eye of, Allah, of Muhammad, right? Don't blame me. I'm only the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger, ladies. Okay? <laughs> Lord of mercy. This is so disgusting. But you know, this is Islam. What can we do? Right? <laughs> if we go to <laughs> Lord of mercy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hymens, guys. Allah loves to talk about the hymens of the women. He needs to mention that, you know. You see, guys, Islam is nothing but a carnal, earthly flesh created, man created religion by Muhammad to fulfill basically the sexual desires of these poor desert people 1400 years ago. These people, like I said earlier, guys, these people used to live in tents. They had camels, maybe some sheep, and the only thing they used to do is listen to stories, 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 story, over and over, poetry. This is why you see so many poetry in the Quran. We know Muhammad stole poetry from people like Amr al-Qais. Remember that uh, conversation that I had with CP guys when I called him a couple months ago on his live show? We mentioned Amr al-Qais, and I have it uploaded also, if you'd like to go watch it after the sh live show. You'll see CP and I discussing Amr al-Qais. So Muhammad loved to steal poetry from very well-known poets before Islam, and he put them in the Quran. Like Dan the Sa'a Shaq al-Qamar, right? The hour is near. And the moon has been split. Muhammad stole that ayah directly from Amr al-Qais and he put it in the Quran. But Amr al-Qais was talking about uh, the beauty of women. They were so beautiful that their beauty would split the moon in half. What did Muhammad do? He stole that poetry and made it sound like it's talking about the end of times. In the end of times, the moon will be split. All right? So guys, <clears throat> don't forget to subscribe and also click on the notification bell so to get notifications when I'm live or upload videos. Also, don't forget to smash that like button so our videos will get higher rankings on YouTube. That's how YouTube works, unfortunately. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video. So as you see in front of you, Muhammad loved to talk about virgins and he loved to talk about what's inside their female parts. I know some people might be disgusted, but that's how the Prophet of Islam was. He loved to talk about women. He was really a womanizer, right? And if you go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, 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 a little bit echo, so Muslims don't miss it. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3254. We can read the following, guys. Read with me. The Prophet said, The first batch of people who will enter paradise, the Islamic prostitution called Jannah, will be glittering like the full moon. Again, very white, you know, very wow. They are really shining. And the batch next to them will be glittering like the most brilliant star in the sky. Wow. Their hearts will be as if the heart of a single man, for they will have neither enmity nor jealousy amongst themselves. Everyone will have two wives from the Huris. So, if you are a Muslim man, this is only for the Muslim men, guys. Not, you know, Muslim women will get nothing. You see, this is only for the Muslim men. The Muslim women will watch how their husbands will be busy in front of them, the flowering virgins, over and over and over and over, all the way to eternity. 
So the women here, the Muslim women, if we have Muslim women, you will enjoy the show of your husband in the Islamic Jannah, the brothel of Allah called Jannah. So Muslim men will have two wives from the Huris, so you'll get two Huris who will be so beautiful, pure and transparent. What? Transparent? The marrow of the bones of their legs will be seen through the bones and the flesh. What? Are you telling me? The women, guys, the Huris, with their large breasts that will not sag, basically they will have, you know, big large breasts, like melons, they will look like this, guys. I kid you not. You will see their narrows. I'm not kidding. I mean, this, uh, this is not me talking. This is the Prophet of Allah. Right? Don't blame me. It says, the marrow of the bones of their legs will be seen through the bones and the flesh. The proof is in front of you. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih. Al-Bukhari, Al-Bukhari, Al-Bukhari. Don't shoot the messenger, guys. So, you, the women that the Muslims will have will look like this. I kid you not. I mean, look at those heels. Man. Any Muslims still convinced in Islam? Are you still convinced that Muhammad is a, is a prophet of God? Really? Muslims, really? In 2019, you still believe in this nonsense? Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Bukhari, Bukhari. Sahih al Bukhari, Bukhari, Bukhari. Man, who doesn't want to have a woman like this? Guys who are married, close your eyes. If we have married guys, close your eyes, guys. You know what Christianity teaches, right? <laughs> I mean, this is not my speech. This is the speech of Muhammad saying this. You will see the bones of their legs will be seen through the bones and the flesh. So you, they will actually look like this. You can see their bones. I mean, what about this This one? I mean, this one must be really... If, if, if there are Muslims who actually believe in the lies of Muhammad, they have to accept that their women in paradise will look like this. I mean, look, I think this is a size... Uh, Six or something, five? I don't know what the, the real sizes are, you know. I think in Europe it's like 38, and UK maybe six, five, I don't know. America, I don't know. What, what size? I don't know. I have no clue. I'm not really that... Uh... I mean, look how beautiful this is, man. Look at the pose. Yeah, Sean Gay. Look at the, what the pose, man. You don't, you don't want to say the Shahada right now, Sean? I mean, Sean, why, why did you send me money, man? Clearly, I'm a liar. And Muhammad must be true. Right? <laughs> Lord of mercy. Any Muslim who think this is true? And look at those hips, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Their <laughs> bones will be seen through right like this like this beautiful so this is your hauris muslims if you go to jannah you will get two like these two and the rest will come from hell so allah will give you 72 women every man will get at least 72 women other sources say even more than thousands of women but at least the lowest Muslim will get 72. Two of them will be Huris and the rest will come from hellfire. So they will get Christian women, for example, Jewish women from hellfire. Really Muslims, you believe in this nonsense? And they will look like this? Not a mess. If you go to the Islamic sources, guys, please read. If you are interested in what the Huris actually are. Abu Umama narrated, the messenger of God said, Muhammad, 
Yeah, it is false translation. But anyway, everyone that Allah admits into paradise will be married to 72 wives. Two of them are Huris. So two of them are Huris. Like this one, right? And 70 of his inheritance of the female dwellers of hell. So Allah will take 70 women from hellfire and they, and they will enter Jannah, the Islamic brothel called Jannah of Allah. And they will be given to the Muslim men who are in Jannah. Those are the extra, you know, two are not enough, right? So you will get 70 extra. And like I said, this is for the lowest level of Muslims. So let's say if you are in the first level of Jannah, because Muslims claim that Jannah has seven levels, right? So if you are in the lowest one, you will get 72. Two of them are the Huris and 70 are from Hellfire, from the Christian and Jewish women, right? For example, all of them will have Lipidinous sex organs, man. CP would say, oof, 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 right? <laughs> oof, oof, oof. <laughs> so they are, you know, they have, uh, yeah, they have uh, really sexual uh, lust. They are really lusty. And he will have an ever erect penis. So, a Muslim man will have an eternal erect penis and they will be very libidinous, right? Muslims, really? What a, guys, guys, I have a question. Question. If there are Muslims in the text or Muslims who are watching, imagine if you see your father in the Islamic Jannah called, uh, sorry, the Islamic brothel called Jannah and you want to give your father a hug, are you going to cross swords? Are you going to cross swords? You know what I mean, right? I mean, you have an eternal erection. Your father will have an eternal erection. What about your uncle? If you agree with one another. And, and they will be very long, right? Very long, erect, male organs. You're, are you going to cross swords? This is from Sunan Abi Majah. Zuhd. Book of Absistence number 39. Oh, Lord of mercy, man. I really feel disgusted. What can we do? Let us read from Al Itqan fi Ulum al Quran, page number 351. This is a very respected book, guys. Each time we sleep with a hurry, look what the, the scholar of this book is saying. He's describing what will happen when you're going to. Sleep with a hori. Look what he's saying, guys. Each time we sleep with a hori, we find her a virgin. So every time you deflower her, Allah will make her a virgin again after you are finished with her. What? Muslims, what? Really? So it's like a recycle business? Allah will have a recycle business? Yeah, no Viagra, there's no Viagra needed, don't pee, you know, uh, endless P, Mr. P, uh, endless Mr. P, Carolina. Uh, every time you're done with a virgin, you deflower her, Allah will make her a virgin again for eternity. So you're, you're, don't worry, you know, if you like virgins, if there is a Muslim in the live chat who is watching, don't worry, be happy, Allah will make you a virgin after you have deflowered her, he will make her virgin again. I mean, come on, guys, with jokes aside, with jokes aside, if you are really a very uh, women, uh, lusty guy, a womanizer, would you love to have virgins or rather prostitute-like women? I mean, what's with the blood, man, every time? Right? Do you rather have sluts, you know, very sexy women, or rather every time a virgin? Well, I mean, come on, man. You have to teach her everything all over again. Maybe she's shy. Well, I mean, uh, it will, maybe it will take you 70 years, you know, to, to, 
you know, to make her comforted and you know, you know how virgins are, right? I mean, if you are a married man, you know, you have to go easy on her, right? Uh, sorry guys if I'm talking like this today. I don't know. Maybe because I had a break. <laughs> this is Islam, guys. What can we do? I wash my hands from this, guys. I'm only the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. This is Islam. And the proof is in front of you. So, besides, so when you... When you you are finished with the virgin, Allah will make her virgin again if you deflowered her. Besides, the penis of the elected, so of the Muslims, the penis of the Muslims will never be soft. Allah will give you an ever and ever erected Mr. P. The erection is eternal. What? Muslims, you really believe in this nonsense? Is Muhammad here telling jokes to the pagan Quraysh 1400 years ago? Was he telling jokes? Of his, or do you believe actually that you will walk with a big nice shiny sword in the Islamic brothel called Jinnah between your legs? Shiny sword. I hope, I hope it, you know, it's like it's made from chrome. I mean, I think uh, Muslim people in Jinnah they all have to wear glasses because, I mean, imagine if those swords will be very shiny, right? You have to have really good shades. I hope they are from, made from, uh, um, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's maybe a raven, raven shades. Raven, right? Is it called raven? Or maybe Gucci, you know, good quality shades. Right? That can help you against the very shiny male eternal erections. Imagine it if, if that shiny light will hit your eyes, man. You, you, maybe you can become blind, man. Weak hadith? This is not weak hadith. This is for the Quran. Tafsir for the Quran, guys. This is not weak. This is Quran. What, what weak? What weak, man? This is Al Itqan fi Ulum al Quran. Quran. This is Quran, guys. A scholar, a respectful scholar, explaining the Quran for you. This is not Hadith. So, the sensation, guys, the sensation, sensation that you feel each time you make love. So here, the scholar is describing the, the, you know, the action between you and the Huris of Jannah is utterly delicious. I mean, you are, you, you, it's so delicious that you have to lick your fingers, guys. You have to lick your fingers, right? It's so delicious. The time that you'll have with the Huris is so delicious that you have to lick your fingers from it. And out of this world, so it, you, it's, it's so delicious, it, you cannot even describe it. What kind of pleasures you will have in the Islamic brothel called Jannah. You see how carnal Islam is, guys? It's nothing but a flesh, carnal, flesh, fake, man-made religion. Muhammad was telling jokes to the desert people in Mecca. And they were actually, some of them were actually buying it. They actually believed Muhammad. And were you to experience it, and this world will faint. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's an undescribable feeling. Undescribable feeling. Anyone saw the Aladdin movie, guys? Undescribable feeling. Yeah, sorry, guys. My, I know my voice is really not very beautiful when I sing. But I, you know, I sometimes sing in the shower, you know. You know, you know I, then I will think about how delicious... If, if, if someday I decide to become a Muslim and say my shahada, how delicious it will be to be with the Huris of Jannah, right? I mean, this, this scholar, when he was giving his tafsir for the Quran, imagine how much he was licking his fingers, man. Each chosen one, i.e. Muslim, will marry 70 Huris. 
And besides the women he married on earth, all will have appetizing beep, beep. Ah. Yummy. Man, I mean this color, you know, is not giving any limitation, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let him miss. If we continue, guys, if we continue. And as said, Allah will be, be, will be pleased with him. The Messenger of Allah said, Upon him blessing him, blah, blah, blah. The servant in paradise, the Muslim in paradise, shall be married to 70 wives. Someone said, Messenger of Allah, can he bear it? I mean, how can you do that, man? 70 wives? I mean, come on. It's already hard to have maybe a nice time with one woman, right? You know, women, some women really, you know, you know those kind of... <clears throat> women you know but what about 70 wives man I mean how can you handle that now Muhammad look what Muhammad said he will be given strength of 100 so the Muslim males guys will have the strength of 100 men so it's okay be happy don't worry be happy you will have the strength of 100 men when you are a Muslim man in the Islamic brothel of Allah called Jannah. So don't worry, be happy. You will manage the 70 wives because you will have the strength of a hundred men. From Zayd ibn Arqam, Allah be will be pleased with him when an incredulous Jew or Christian asked the Prophet, blah 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 upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah praying on him, right? Allah prays on the Prophet to who we don't know. After 400 years, we still don't know who Allah is praying to. And Allah is still praying. But anyway, that's off topic. Are you claiming? So the guys are, are you claiming that a man will eat and drink in paradise? So you will eat and drink in paradise? He replied, yes, by the one in whose hand is my soul. And each of them will be given the strength of a hundred men in his eating, drinking, coitus. I think that's, sorry guys, my English sometimes. I think that's sex, right? And pleasure. Is uh, sexual intercourse, guys? I don't know. I don't know the word, uh, the meaning of this word. But anyway, so as you see, this is how the scholars of Islam are describing how you will have sex like a man with the huris, and you will have the strength of 100 males. To enjoy the sex in Islamic Jannah. Yeah, sex. Okay, okay. Thank you, Andrew, much. So, and in the Quran, guys, Quran chapter 78, ayah 33, this means round breast. So, Rob Christian didn't lie when he said the Horis will have round breasts, really big round breasts. They meant by this. That the breast of these girls, of the virgins, will be fully rounded and not sagging. So don't be worried, women. Don't be worried. Be happy. Allah will give you very round, large breasts. Very round. And if you are sagging, you have sagging breasts, don't worry. Allah will make them look beautiful again. Alright. So you don't need plastic surgery, guys, before entering Jannah. Muslim, Muslims, don't worry. Your women don't need to have plastic surgery. Yeah, philoptus, yeah. Exactly. <sighs> guys, who is convinced? Come on. I mean, are you not convinced now? Are you not uh, convinced? Don't you want to say the Shahada? I mean, uh, the descri describing of these Huris and Endless guys, I can go on for, for many hours like this. According to the Prophet, the Huris of Paradise, the Huris of the Paradise, will be pure women, free of menstruation. What? They won't menstruate? There is no urine. I mean, I understand that urine is very uh, disgusting. No, no. They don't. They won't go to the toilet. What? 
cough and children. So you won't, the women won't have children. This reminds me of that hadith where males, if they wish, they can bear children. So the males, guys, in this case, the males, instead of the women will have, will bear the, the children in paradise. So it's switched. It's the other way around this time. So no menstruation, no urine, no poo poo, no kach, and no children. Look how pure these women are, man. This is why they don't have sagging. Yeah. The host will sing for you. Wow. They will sing in paradise for you on divine purity and praise. We are most beautiful. Look, uh, look how they are describing themselves, guys. I mean, come on, isn't that a little bit arrogant? Uh, yeah. Huris, you'll call yourself beautiful? I mean, come on, can someone call himself beautiful? Shouldn't someone else call you beautiful? Yeah, uh, Queen Midas, please share. This video is yours. Don't, you don't need to ask me if it's okay of, or if you're allowed to share. Please share. Okay? So the women, the Huris, those very large-breasted Huris, will sing and they will say we are very beautiful and we are for the honored husbands for the honored muslim husbands what i i i wonder what kind of song they will sing what how, how it will you think it will end up in the top 10 will it be a hip-hop song or will it be an r&b song who knows right allah alam Muhammad said that an inmate of the paradise will have the sexual string of 70 men. Now it's 70. So they don't even differ on the numbers. Because last time it said 100, right? 100 men. Now it's 70 men. Muhammad said an inmate of paradise will have 500 whores. So you see the numbers goes up, guys. If, if he's a good Muslim, he'll get 500 whores, 4,000 unmarried women and 8,000 widowed women. What? I mean, you're going to be very busy, guys. If you're going to say the Shahada right now, don't worry, be happy. You're going to be very busy in the Islamic brothel of Allah called Jannah. I, I, you know, I'm convinced Muhammad is not telling jokes, guys. He's not a joker. This is this is true story. Now, Yuri Becker in, in the Islamic Jannah, the Islamic Jannah, the Islamic Paradise, you can have a baby, but if you want to have a baby, the male, if you are a male, you are the one that needs to carry it. So you are the one who will become pregnant, not the women. Right? So it's the other way around in Islam. Did you catch it? Take notes, guys. Take notes. The women are not the ones who will become pregnant. It will be the men. Any Muslim who is still convinced, if you want to have a child, your women won't ha carry the child in Islamic Jannah. It will be the males, according to Muhammad. It's, you can go find it. There is a nice hadith about it. How a male, if he wishes, he can carry a child instead of the women. The women, you know, they are nothing but really nice, beautiful sex dolls. Right? And like we said, they will look like this. Are you convinced? Look how beautiful, man. Look at those heels and look at the position, man. Look how beautiful. Look at this, man. Cock. I mean, come on. I'm convinced. When I'm, when I'm done, guys, when I'm done, when I finish teaching, I will say my shahada. Because today, after today, I'm convinced. I kid you not. Uh, let us go to another hadith, guys. You know, this is Jama Tirmidhi, Jama Tirmidhi from Sunnah.com. It was said, "O oh Allah's Messenger, shall we use the water of Buddha well, well to perform ablution?" So, someone is asking the Prophet of Islam, "Can we do ablution? Can we wash ourselves?" Well, it is a well, water, guys. A well is water, right? A well in which menstruation rags, so women menstruation clothing, the blood of women on, the, on those clothes that are inside the well, flesh of dogs, 
flesh of dirty dogs, maybe they are black dogs, you know Muhammad, what Muhammad used to think about black dogs, and the putrid are dumped, so the waste, the, the, the garbage is dumped, and look what Muhammad's response is, I'm, I'm sure Muhammad is not telling jokes here, indeed this water is pure, nothing makes it impure, what? This is disgusting. And Muhammad said the water is pure. Any scientist in 2019 who will agree with Muhammad that if you have menstruation rags, clothing of women, flesh of dead dogs inside the water, and the garbage that is dumped in that water is still pure water. You can drink it, you can put it, you know, when they do evolution, guys, Muslims, if you go watch how Muslims do evolution, they put water in their nose, they do it in their mouth, they clean behind their ears and their hands and everywhere, right? So, according to Muhammad, that water is pure. Nothing makes it impure. Any Muslim? Any Muslim who can refute this hadith? Is, is this a fake hadith, guys? Is this a fake hadith? Oh no, oh oh, it's not fake, it's Hassan. It's good hadith. Oh uh oh, oh uh oh. I think Muhammad that day he was having jokes, don't you think? He was telling jokes. Any Muslim in 2019 who believes in this that water that has filthy rags, flesh of dogs, and putrid inside the water, the water is still pure? Really? Is there any Muslim? Mayday, mayday. Do we have any Muslim who can defend his prophet? Do we have any Muslim? I wish we have any Muslim. Sayyid al-Bukhari narrated Abdullah bin Mas'ud that he was asked as to who informed the prophet about the jinns at night when they heard the Quran. He said that a tree informed the prophet about them. Tree can talk to Muhammad? A tree can talk to Muhammad? Really? I, you know, I watched that movie uh, about that doctor who could talk to animals, but do trees? Trees can talk in Islam? No way. Trees talk in Islam? I mean, guys, guys, Muslims always say, Muhammad never talked to Allah, you know? We had a middle guy who, in the shape of Jibreel. Jibreel was delivering the Quran to Muhammad. He was the middle guy, right? So Allah didn't like to talk about, to Muhammad directly, but he gave him the opportunity to talk to trees. That makes sense. So Muhammad could talk to trees, but he could not talk to his own Lord? To Allah? Again, Muhammad is talking the truth here, guys. He's saying the truth. Muhammad is not a joker, guys. You must be convinced by now, right? Come on, man. Please say the Shahada, guys. No, uh, kidding. Any Muslim who still accept this, guys, after 2000? Uh, sorry, in 2019, after 1400 years, you still believe in this nonsense that uh, Muhammad could talk to trees? But Allah didn't want to talk directly to Muhammad? That doesn't make sense. If we go to this hadith, this is Sahih al Bukhari. This is a really nice story about Moses. Read with me guys, narrated Abu Huraira, who is a Sahabi, a companion of Muhammad. The Prophet said, the people of Bani Israel, the Jews basically, the Bani Israel used to take bath naked all together looking at each other. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> the Prophet Moses used to take a bath alone, you know, Muhammad, according to Muhammad, guys, according to Muhammad, Moses was shy, right? So... <laughs> According to Muhammad, Moses was shy, so he took a bath alone. They said, by Allah, nothing prevents Moses from taking a bath with us except that he has a 
scrotal hernia. So he has a hernia. This is why he's taking a bath alone. So once Moses went out to take a bath, so Moses went out to take a bath and put his clothes. Now take, take notes, guys. This is the important part of this hadith. According to Muhammad, Moses went out to take a bath and put his clothes over a stone. So he put his clothes off and put it on a stone. And then the stone ran away with the clothes of Moses. So see, the stones, guys, were trolling Moses, alayhi salam. The Islamic Moses was getting trolled by stones. So the stones took the clothes of Moses and they went on a hike. So the stones were doing a nice marathon like uh, the Jamaican guy. What was his name? Usain Bolt, right? Imagine if those stones could run as hard as Usain Bolt. I'm sure Moses would have never catch those stones. I mean, this guy needs his clothes back, man. Ya Allah! Please give me back my, 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 my clothes, man. I'm naked. So Moses followed the stone, but naked. <laughs> this must be a true story according to Muhammad. So Moses, but naked, following the stone saying, My clothes! Oh, my clothes! Oh, stone! Give me my clothes back! Give me my clothes back, man. Man, I want my clothes back, Stone. My clothes, my clothes, oh Stone, my clothes, my clothes. Till the people of Ben Israel saw him butt naked. I kid you not. Look how Muhammad, the filthy satanic prophet of Islam, making fun of the beloved prophet Moses. He's making fun of him, man. You call him a prophet? Muslims, you really, you really. Consider Muhammad to be a true prophet while he's making fun of Moses, the Moses. What a shame. What a shame that you call this fake prophet a prophet of God. What a shame. Shame on you for following such a prophet who is making fun of the Moses, who is one of the greatest prophets of God in the Old Testament, right? So the people of Ben Israel saw Moses, God forbid, they saw Moses butt naked and said, By Allah, Moses has got no defect in his body. Moses took his clothes and began to be the stone. So, Moses started to be the stones? What? So he catch the stones and he started to be the stones? No way. No way. If Christian Prince was here, he would have said, Oof, oof, oof. What? What? Moses beating the, the hell out of the stones for stealing his clothes? This must be a true story, guys. Muslims, do you really believe in this nonsense? Shame on you, man. Come on. Wake up, Muslims. Wake up. Leave this satanic cult. Drop this fake prophet who is making fun of Moses. Telling false stories about Moses. This guy truly has no shame. And you call him a prophet? And Abu Huraira, the companion of Muhammad, added, By Allah, there are still six or seven marks present on the stone from that excessive beating. So according to Abu Huraira, who is one of the best companions, along with uh, Aisha, guys, you need to know, along with Aisha, Abu Huraira in Sunni Islam, Abu Huraira is one of the guys who gave a lot of hadith, right? He is considered one of the most trusted companions, right? Because Muslims accept a lot of hadith from him. So according to him, he added, Because Moses beat the stones so harshly, the stones had six or seven marks present on the stone. I wonder if he took other stones and he started to beat the stone, or maybe a stick or whatever. I'm sure, guys, I'm sure, and you have to agree with me, Muhammad was not telling jokes. This is a true story, guys. 
insulting Moses. This must be a true story. Muslims, I hope you are still convinced after today. I still, I really hope. No, actually, I'm, let, let us, without jokes aside. I really hope that you will denounce Muhammad today and accept your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the proof is in front of you. Muhammad was nothing but a troll. He was nothing but a liar and a deceiver. He was a joker of his time. But actually, those poor, illiterate people 1400 years ago believed everything that Muhammad was telling them about Moses and about everything that we mentioned today, about the Huris, how beautiful the Huris are, right? They look like this and whatnot. But crazy stuff, crazy stuff. And you Muslims claim that this guy is a prophet of God? What a shame. If we go to another hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, al-Bukhari. Hadith number 135. Allah's Messenger said, The prayer of a person who does hadath, passes urine, stool, or wind, is not accepted till he performs evolution. A person from Hadarmouth asked Abu Huraira, What is the hadath? Abu Huraira replied, Hadath means the passing of the wind. So if you pass wind, or basically... You know, if you fart, Allah will not accept your prayers. This must be another true story, guys. You have to do ablution. And I hope it's not in that well, guys. I hope it's not going to be in that well that has menstruation blood of women, flesh of dogs, and putrid that are dumped in that well. And according to Muhammad, that's pure water. So don't do it there, guys. I'm sure you'll get sick. You will get sick. Don't listen to Muhammad, guys. Hassan Hadi. Don't listen to Muhammad. You will get sick. Don't accept the lies of Muhammad. Right? So if you're going to do ablution, don't do it in the well of Buddha. Okay? So Allah will not accept your prayer if you pass wind. If you fart, wow, must be a true story. Again, Muhammad is not telling jokes here. The Prophet said, this is from Sahih al-Bukhari, Bukhari, Bukhari, Hadith number 5452. The Prophet said, guys, let me drink some water. It's really hot here and I get a sore throat after talking so long. The Prophet said, whoever has eaten garlic... Now it's about garlic, guys. The story here is about eating garlic. I mean, who doesn't like garlic in his food, man? I mean, it's delicious. Anyway, whoever has eaten garlic or onion should keep away from us or should keep away from our mosque. Why? Is it the smell? Or again, would Allah not accept the prayers? What's, what's with garlic? I mean, garlic is delicious, man. I mean, come on. Who doesn't like garlic? Anyone who doesn't like garlic? Come on, don't lie. You, everyone here likes garlic, right? So if you ate garlic, make sure to not go to the mosque, guys. Some people might die because of your breath. At least wash or clean your mouth. Do some brushing. Make sure it's sensodine or uh, whatever good... Uh, Colgate, make, to sh make sure to use good stuff, right? Else you, Allah will not accept your prayers. Maybe you will kill some people because of your breath, stinking breath of the car. Right? You don't like me? Why you don't like me, man? Uncle, Uncle why you don't like me? You want to call me? Show everyone how I'm lying? Why don't you like me, man? Come on. You know, sometimes I don't like myself, but uh, what, what, uh, you know, Allah made me do this. According to the Quran, Allah misguides people. So Allah is the one who misguided me to expose his fake prophet. So don't blame me, blame Allah for misguiding me, exposing Islam every week, day in, day out. Allah is the one who is misguiding David Wood, Sam Shamron, Rob Christian, Christian Prince, He's the one who is misguiding us 
And he's the one making us expose the fake prophet of Islam every day. Well, maybe not every day, maybe every week. Let us be political correct here, right? So don't, you know, don't blame me. Man up. Like, like uh, Lydia Anello, God bless your sister. Man up, call me. Call me. So guys, by this we will end today's teaching. And we can conclude that Muhammad is nothing but a comedian. We showed you enough proof. And I'm sure you're convinced that Muhammad is a fake prophet. He was nothing but a troll of his time. Right? Guys, you remember those trolls that, look, that had hair like this in the 90s? I think it was in the 90s, right? They sell, used to sell those small trolls, those dolls, like bread, right? Back in those days. So I think Muhammad had hair like this. He was the troll of his time. Do we have any Muslim, guys? Do we have any Muslim who wants to call me? My Skype is open, guys. Call me. Come on, call me. My Skype is open if you think you have the courage and the knowledge if you think you have the courage and the knowledge please call me i have a nice headset i will carefully listen to what you have to say call me refute me silence me like muhammad hijab who the one who said allah prays for not to muhammad Right? Right? Silence me. Please end my career so I can not attack your fake prophet anymore. Expose him every week. Is there any Abdul? Guys, if you have questions, yes, radical love. Uh, because of the people, really, I really had nice support. I received some nice donations and I finally got a new computer. Thanks to the Lord. You know, we always say the Lord provides. And through you guys, I was finally able to buy a new computer. And this is why I have now a stable live show. I hope it was really stable, right? Did you have any frame losses or did you had any buffering? I hope not. Is there any question in the live chat? Yeah, thanks to the Lord, radical love. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's teaching. I hope you benefit from this. I hope you took notes. If you want to rewatch, you came in late, please rewatch the live show of today. Take some parts out. If you want to download it, take some parts out that you are important for you. Share them. On your YouTube channels or on social media. Because the truth must be told. The truth must go out. That Muhammad was nothing but a liar. A joker of his time. He was nothing but a deceiver. And like I said. Please don't forget to subscribe. And smash that like button. Also click on the notification bell. To receive notification when we go live. Right. Are there any questions, guys? Are there any questions? Please feel free to ask them. Don't be shy. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you for the nice and positive reactions. God bless you. God bless your families. Keep supporting us, guys. Keep supporting us. Don't forget to like our videos. Support the warriors. Support the David Wood. Support Sham Shamoun. Pray for us. Support Christian Prince. We need your prayers because we are putting ourselves in the front lines. You know, we got a lot of hate messages, threats. So we need our prayers. We are doing this not for ourselves, guys. We are not doing this for the money. You know that, right? We are doing this for the truth. To help the poor Muslims who are nothing but victims. Please come back, Muslims. Drop Islam. Please come back to Jesus Christ. Because the proof is in front of you. 
Muhammad created Islam for the sexual desires, for the power lusts, right? He created Islam to attack Jesus Christ because he contradicts the teaching of Christ. He contradicts the crucifixion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Come back for your own salvation. Please come back to Jesus Christ because in the end every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. God bless you, including the Muslims. I ask God, our holy living God, to open up your eyes. We are not doing this to mock you, Muslims. We are doing this to show you that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. And the proof is in front of you. Where, where are the Muslims, guys? Are we out of Muslims? Uh, Edu Radia, who is Muhammad's father? He's asking, who is Muhammad's father? We don't know. Actually, Edo, we don't know. Muslims claim it's Abdullah, but Abdullah is basically, guys, a John Doe. We call someone a John Doe if we don't know who the guy is. We don't know who Muhammad's father is. They say it's Abdullah, but there's, that doesn't make sense. Because according to Muhammad, Abdullah died as a pagan and he's burning in hellfire. How is, he, how is his name Abdullah, the slave of Allah? Right? And according to Islam, According to Islam, Muhammad was in the belly of his mother for at least four years. But it was a custom that women in the pagan time before Islam, it was normal for women to sleep around with different men. They actually used to go around the Kaaba naked and have sex, sex or, sexual orgies uh, around the Kaaba. I kid you not. Doing all kinds of nasty stuff on the black stones. And Muslims say the black stones became black because of the sins of mankind. That's not true. We know why it became black. Because the women, they used to put their menstruation blood on the black stones. To, you know, for fraternity reasons. So no, we don't believe that Muhammad, real father, was Abdullah. We believe that it's Waraka ibn Nufl, the cousin of the wife of Muhammad, Khadija. Yeah, really, Michel van der Vlies. P.D. Vlies. Yes, really. Yeah, really. That's what the women before Islam used to do to the black stones. And now Muslims prostrate in front of the stones. They lick and kiss the black stones. Uh, Imam Mahdi, Peach Girl 91 is asking, what about Imam Mahdi? What about him? You want to know who he is? Well, Muslims don't know who Imam Mahdi will be. He's basically the, the guy who will come and uh, implement uh, peace and whatnot. He will rule for a long time. They don't know who, it, who he is, but his name will be his name will be Muhammad Abdullah. A lot of Muslims actually claim to be the Mahdi. There was a guy in the 70s, guys. If you let's see if I can. Uh, uh, who claimed to be Al Mahdi. And he surrounded Al Kaaba. Guys, he took the Kaaba. I kid you not. He had soldiers with him. He took the Kaaba. Let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, here. Let me post. Yeah, it's really a bad picture, but you can see here these people here that you see in front of you. They took the Kaaba. I kid you not. They took the Kaaba. They attacked the Kaaba and they took the Kaaba from the Saudis for a very long time. And you, you know, close your eyes guys, this may be disgusting for me. This is the guy, they killed him, and he, his name was Muhammad Abdullah. Do you see it? His name was Muhammad Abdullah. Let me click it away because, you know. His name was Muhammad Abdullah and he claimed to be Al Mahdi. The Al Mahdi, you know. But they surrounded him and his soldiers. 
the Saudi government, they surrounded them and they killed them. So the Kaaba guys was attacked over and over. It was sacked over and over. Al Qaramita did it, you know. The leader of Al Qaramita, he went on top of the Kaaba, I kid you not, and he pissed on the Kaaba. He took the black stones for many years, for at least 20 years, and he screamed and shouted to Allah. He said, Allah, if you are there, send your bird army to kill me. And Allah did not do anything. Right? According to the Quran, in chapter 105, if I'm not mistaken, it says, If anyone attacks the Kaaba, Allah will send his bird army and they will throw stones at the people who attack the Kaaba. But the Kaaba is, has been sacked over and over. Right? They destroyed the black stone. They stole the black stones and Allah kept silent. Right? Where is the bird army of Allah? Why didn't Allah send his bird army? Why didn't he attack you know, Muhammad Abdullah, the guy who attacked the Kaaba in the 70s? Let me give you another picture of him. This is the guy. He and his uh, brother-in-law attacked the Kaaba. Right? Fake Mahdi, claiming to be the real Mahdi, attacking the Kaaba, taking the Kaaba for a very long time, and Allah did nothing. Right? See the soldiers freeing the Kaaba from this guy and his. Uh, army of thugs any Muslim do we have any Muslim guys do we have any Muslim do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me and refute me on today's topic we are lost free cute call me call me Show me, show me how your prophet is a true prophet. If you have the courage and the knowledge, you call yourself a man, call me. Free cute. My Skype ID, guys, is the Rob Christian. Call me. End my career. Come on. Don't be a coward. Are you telling me after 1400 years, Muslims became soft? I mean, the Sahaba used to kill people left and right, right? They attacked Iraq, they attacked Egypt, they took Egypt, they took Syria, they took all these countries. And now you Muslims are became keyboard terrorists? Did you become keyboard terrorists? Huh? Muslims became soft? Guys, I think Muslims of today, this is how they look like. You know? Right? This is how Muslims look like. They do, they do jihad. You know? And this guy is playing, playing music. He make, he's making music. Any Muslim? Come on, man. We are exposing Muhammad here. And we don't have any Muslim who will call in to defend his prophet. Yeah, they are internet jihadis, right? They love to talk in a text, but they don't have the courage and the knowledge to, to call us, call in life. I mean, we are live. You know, when I sit on Discord, guys, we have a lot of Muslims. You're a Christian, you're a liar, blah, blah, blah. But when I go live, they all become puppies, right? They all become jihad terrorists, saying, you guys, you don't have the truth. Oh, come, talk, call, talk, call me, call me, show me that I'm lying, end my career, silence me. You know, they love to call themselves lines of Islam, line of Arabia. I had a guy, I debated a guy whose name was line of Arabia, he had no clue who I was. When I 
joined a Discord, guys. I, sometimes I'm on Discord, right? People who know me. They didn't know who Rob Christian was because normally I used to hang out on Paul Talk for many years, right? I was on Paul Talk for f at least 14 years, right? When I went to Discord, pe people on Discord didn't know. The Muslims on Discord didn't know who I was, you know? So they started to debate me left and right. Who is this guy? You know, people are talking about him. But after a couple of debates, they, you know, they started to know me. And they saw my two videos. I finally started to record videos after so long time. You know, I made one. I always say I made one mistake, guys. I didn't record videos like Christian Prince. Else I would have had thousands and thousands of videos by now. But anyway, it's never late, right? To do the Lord works. To expose false teaching. Because the Bible teaches us to expose false teachers. Like Muhammad. False teaching. You know? They are all lions when it comes to... Uh, Keyboards, keyboard chat, but they are becoming puppies when we are live. God bless you, Ronald Carino. God bless you. God bless your family. Please, guys, keep supporting us. Keep us in your prayers. Are you out of Muslims? Line of Islam. You're a line. Come on, man. Line of Islam. You're in text. Call me. Please call me. End my career. Christianity is false. <laughs> call me. Show me that we are false. We are liars. Show me. If you have any knowledge, you have any courage to defend your fake prophet, show us that you are nothing but a satanic believer. You are nothing but a follower of Satan. That's what you are, Muslims. Call us. End our careers. I mean, talk is cheap in text, right? A smart Muslim is an ex-Muslim. Well, Li Ju, I have to agree with you, man. Sorry, but I have to agree with you, Muslims. I have to agree with Li Ju. A smart Muslim is an ex-Muslim. And we have a lot of smart ex-Muslims lately, guys. Muslims are leaving Islam left and right. Even in Saudi Arabia. Even in the north of Africa. In Morocco. In Tunisia, even in the country that is devastated by civil war in Syria, Kurdish Muslim guys, Kurds, Sunni Muslims, for the first time they build a church. Just go on YouTube. Kurds build a church. Muslim Sunni Muslims build a church and now they are Christians. They are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. This is why I always say, guys, go easy on Muslims. Be bold. When you debate Muslims, be bold. Right? Jesus was not a hippie, guys. So a lot of, you know, a lot of Christians here in the West, they think that Jesus was a hippie. He was always nice. No. He was like us now. He wasn't scared of the Jewish leaders who were nothing but hypocrites. He even used to whip, right? Lion of Islam, I'm here, I'm here, debate me. Liar, stop lying, man, shame on you. Do you have any shame? You're nothing but a coward, like your prophet, like your imams. Where are your imams? Why are they hiding? Do we have any ustaz? Do we have any imam? Who think he has the knowledge and the courage to call me, refute me, silence me? Call me, line of Islam. Let your dad call me. If you are a coward, let your dad call me. If your dad is a coward, let your mom call me. Let your imam call me. Line of Islam. Please rename your, your, yourself, rename your nickname to... The puppy of Islam. That's, that name, that nickname suits you better. Do we have any question, guys, about today's teaching? Or I hope you had a nice time, guys. 
I mean, I hope you are not convinced that when you are saying the Shahada, you will receive women like this, who look like this. Right? According to Muhammad, the Huris that you will receive in Islamic Jannah will look like this. Look at those high heels, man. I, I mean, guys, right? With good taste. I'm sure you are in love with those high heels, right? This is the kind of Huris that you receive. You will see their bones. Look how beautiful these women are, man. Are you not convinced to become a Muslim now? Or do you think like me? Oh, I still have that picture. Sorry, guys. <laughs> or do you think like me that Muslims became keyboard terrorists? Muslims of today, they became keyboard terrorists. Instead of calling us, refuting us, they are sitting behind their computer screens, behind their keyboards, looking like this. We are Muslims. We are the proud Muslims of 2019. But unfortunately, there are nothing but puppies who cannot defend their fake prophet. Yeah, sorry, guys. I uh, clicked it away. Sorry. I didn't know it was in the background still that picture of that fake Al Mahdi who took the Kaaba and who was who got killed by the Saudi government. Uh, Lutut Sangha is saying, RC, tell me more about uh, about Didad, the liar. Well, Ahmed Didad, guys, Ahmed Didad, 30, let's say 30 years ago when he started doing what he was doing, there was no internet yet like today, you know, the Islamic sources and all were not, was not on internet. People had no clue about real Islam, so he had free access to do what he was doing, right? Not many people could refute him because they had no clue about Islam, right? Imam, he called himself Imam Ahmed Didad, right? He was an Imam. Unfortunately, he could not speak even Arabic. He was a guy from South Africa. And I hope if you have the time, you need to go watch my two videos about Ahmed Idad, part one and part two. It's between my other videos. I mentioned that he actually has no clue about Islam, right? He was talking about the 99 names of Allah. Ahmed Idad, in his lecture, was mentioning the 99 names of Allah. And I challenged during my teaching about Ahmed Idad, I challenged all the Imams, I challenged any Muslim who can show me the 99 names of Allah inside the Quran. Because Muslims love to talk about the 99 names of Allah. But the 99 names are not in the Quran. There are at least 26 names of Allah missing in the Quran. So why are you talking about the 99 names of Allah? Why is Ahmed Idad in his lectures 30 years ago, why was he talking about the 99 names of Allah, which are not to be found in the Quran? He even said the Holy Quran. If you watch that video, guys, there's not, there nothing called Holy Quran in Islam. The Quran is unholy. I kid you not, the Quran is unholy. You can't call the Quran holy. You have to call it Quran al kareem And there's a scholar who is saying there's nothing called holy in Islam. There's nothing called Al-Muqaddas, right? Holy in Arabic, guys, is Al-Muqaddas. When we want to call the Holy Bible, when we want to call it as Arabic speaking Christians, the Holy Bible, we, we call it Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, the Holy Book, Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, Holy. But you can't call the Quran holy in Islam. You have to call it Al-Quran al kareem So Ahmed Ida, during his lecture, and I spanked him, even he, I'm, I know he's dead, you know, it's not nice, but we have to re rebuke those false teachers because a lot of Muslims till today are following people like Ahmed Ida. Ahmed Idad lied and he said the Holy Quran in English. So he's nothing but a liar. You can't call the Quran holy. And Muslims still using the same nonsense of Ahmed Idad 30 years later.
Yeah. The Quran, guys, the Quran is not holy. It's unholy, actually. If something is not holy, guys, if something is not holy, then it means it's unholy, right? Let's see if I can find that video for you guys. I have a lot of videos, I know. Bear with me. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see if this is going to work, guys. Let's see if this is going to work. Okay. Of miracles. I hope you can hear this. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Can you hear this, guys? Can you hear this? Uh, Abdul, can you hear this? There is no such thing called the Holy Quran. Guys, can you hear can you hear it? Give me one if you can hear it. You can hear? Give me one. Okay, you can hear. It. Okay. Let me Okay. Listen oh, carefully, guys. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Uh, Abdul, there is no such thing called the Holy Quran. The Quran in Islam is unholy. Yes, you heard it correctly. The Quran in Arabic is called Al Quran Al Karim, the noble Quran. Take notes, guys. Let me pray for you a video from a Sunni Sheikh who will rebuke and destroy Ahmadidat when Ahmadidat. Look said how Ahmadidat is going to get destroyed holy. by today's no, scholars, guys. No such thing Take notes. called Holy Prophet or Holy Quran. Let me play the video for you. No such thing as Holy Quran. You will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says Al Quran al Muqaddas? Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there's no such thing as holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called holy Quran. In Christianity, you have holy Father, holy Son. Did you holy catch it? Ghost, holy no Bible. holy. There's nothing called Islam, holy. We don't did you catch it? There is nothing called holy in Islam. So when something is not holy, it's unholy. It's from Satan. Thank you very much, Mr. Sheikh. Thank you for rebuking Ahmadidat. Thank you for spanking Ahmadidat, who said the holy Quran. So if the Quran is not holy, then it's unholy. It's from Satan. Thank you very much. Clap, clap, clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's, let, let me scroll back. This is funny stuff, man, guys. Okay, guys. Let, let me. Ahmadidat, when Ahmadidat said guys. the Quran Take notes, guys. holy. No, there is no such thing called holy prophet or holy Quran. Let me play the video for you. No such thing as holy Quran. You will not, Holy in Arabic means muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says Al Quran al Muqaddas? Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there's no such thing as Holy Quran. No such thing we as Holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called Holy Quran. In Christianity, you have Holy Father, Holy Son, Did Holy you catch Ghost, <laughs> Holy Bible. But in Islam, we don't have Holy Prophet, Holy Quran, and the Holy other things. Have you? There is nothing called holy in Islam. Oops! Muslims, you follow an unholy Quran, you follow an unholy prophet, you follow an unholy religion. Leave Islam, Muslims. Leave Islam. The proof is in front of you. Wake up! Yeah, this is a really cute Imam, right? I like his beard. I, I'm, I'm going to grow my beard like him. I really love this beard. Imagine my, me, guys, with this kind of beard. Sexy, right? So, unholy Quran, unholy religion called Islam, unholy prophet. What's left? What's left, guys? Muslims, 
Your religion is unholy. Your Allah is unholy. That means everything in Islam is from Satan. Take notes, guys. Please use this part for your benefit. Cut it, uh, cut it, download the video, guys, if you like this, or go to the video, Ahmadidad, the Islamic Night Part 2. I made Part 1 and Part 2, rebuking Ahmadidad, exposing him and spanking him. Use this, guys. Your, my videos are your videos. You don't even need to ask me permission to download my videos. We do this for the truth. And as we showed you, the Quran is unholy. Allah is unholy. The Prophet is unholy. And this Imam, who is very, finally found a very trustful Imam. <laughs> He's a Sunni respected Imam. He says, there is nothing called holy in Islam. There is nothing called holy in Islam. Al-Muqaddas. There is nothing called Al-Muqaddas, which in Arabic means holy. Guys, we call, like I said earlier, we call the Bible, the Holy Bible in Arabic as Christians, as Arabic-speaking Christians, we call it Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, the Holy Book, Al-Muqaddas. But as you heard, there's nothing called Al-Muqaddas in Islam. So when there's something not holy, it must be unholy from Satan. So Islam, conclusion, Muslims question, if Islam is not holy, Allah is not holy, the Quran is not holy, then it means you follow an unholy satanic religion, man-made unholy satanic religion, man-made self-proclaimed prophet of Islam, unholy prophet. Please leave this satanic cult called Islam. Come back to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Guys, if you like today's teaching, I'm about to... Let's see, I'm not sure if, if my next live show will be about... If you really like today's video, guys, today's teaching, today's evidence that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet, maybe the next live show or the live show after that will be about the bisexual prophet of Islam. I made a video about it before, but I want to discuss this also during my live show. The bisexual prophet of Islam. Muhammad was a bisexual, and we are going to prove that in our future live show. We will go to the Islamic sources, and we will prove to you that Muhammad had sexual activities with men. No problem, Lydia Anil. If you didn't catch the whole live show of today, you can replay it. It will take some time for YouTube to process it because it, today's live show is really long. So take your time. It, may, it might take, let's say, 20 minutes to process. And you can also see the live chat also. But it takes some time for YouTube to, to process it, right? Don't forget, guys, please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button also click on the notification bell are there any questions do we have any muslims are you telling me we are exposing islam for at least one and a half hour and no muslim can defend his prophet no muslim in the live chat who can call me on skype the Europe Christian, my Skype ID is the Europe Christian. Are you telling me there are no Muslims left who can defend Islam? Yeah, guys, about Zakir Naik, Lothar Tsengai, good that you mentioned Zakir Naik. Guys, we have news about Zakir Naik. Zakir Naik, during his lecture, in, during his last lecture, he clearly stated that he's nothing but a racist. And he is not allowed to do live lectures anymore in Malaysia because they found out he's nothing but a racist. So he's not allowed to give lectures anymore. So slowly they will silence him because he's nothing but a deceiver and a liar like his fake prophet. Right? Thank you, Mos. God bless you. God bless your family. 
Thank you for the positive comment. I think we are out of Muslims today. I hope you guys, you enjoyed my live show. God bless you. And hopefully we can see each other in my next live show. Or maybe I will also start to <clears throat> record videos. I'm not sure what, will, what I will do because I just came back. I took a break, like I said earlier, before I started. I took a break for a week because sometimes you really feel disgusted because of Islam, you know. It's not always pleasing to talk about Islam. But we have to do it for the glory of Christ to help those poor Muslim victims. Guys, please spread our videos around. Download them. Spread them around. Cut parts that you like out of our long videos. Maybe the video is very long, but at least download it, cut it out. Cut some parts out and upload it on your YouTube channels, on social media. Because we need to help those poor people who are nothing but victims of Islam. Those poor Muslims. Right? God bless everyone. Thank you for watching, guys. And we will see each other again very soon. God bless and thank you for watching. Jesus is Lord. And Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet and Islam is false.